Before I begin, I have to apologise for my liberal use of three-letter abbreviations. I hope this is not too confusing, especially for anyone outside Ireland. Maybe listen to or read part one to find out what each of these acronyms means, or have a look at the explanations in the description box below. In January 2019, just before COVID, I received another letter from the DSP, but not about my pension. They wanted to let me know about the free travel scheme to which I would soon be entitled. The free travel scheme was introduced in 1967 by the then Finance Minister Charles J. Hawhey. With a free travel pass, an old age pensioner like me could hop on a bus or a train and it would not cost me a cent. Since the free travel scheme was introduced, however, the Irish government had changed the rules. I would be allowed free travel only if I had a PSC. The DSP's letter explained why. Quote, this card has a photograph and a separate contactless chip which allows it to interact with ticketing systems so you can use it on public transport in the future. End of quote. So the PSC was now doubling as a free travel card. If I wanted to enjoy this perk, it was necessary to be on the DSP database, or PSI data set, as they called it. But what about my pension? That was much more important. Two months later, I had my answer. On my 66th birthday, I received my very first pension payment, even though I did not have a PSC. Meanwhile, the DSP was growing impatient at my lack of interest in free travel. They wrote again in April 2019, telling me that, if I did not apply for my PSC soon, my entitlement to free travel would be disallowed so I would not be able to ride on a bus or a train without buying a ticket. But at that point I was beyond caring. My pension was safe. Besides, I hardly ever use public transport and if I did, I could pay the fare like anyone else. So I filed the letters away and forgot all about them. That would have been the end of this story, except there was a coda. During the second half of 2021, my wife reached the venerable age of 66 herself. Like me, she received her pension on time. However, unlike me, there was no mention of free travel in the DSP's correspondence with her. Although she had reached retirement age, my wife enjoyed working and decided to continue in her full-time job. She'd always used public transport to go to and from her office. Having to pay for her bus or train ticket when she could have free travel would cost her money. But the PSC was probably the last thing on either of her minds at that time. As you will probably have guessed already, by then we were well and truly in the COVID era. For us, that meant navigating a world that seemed to have gone suddenly bonkers. My wife's job was considered to be an essential service, so she continued to work throughout those dark days, mostly at home. Whenever she was needed in her place of employment, she travelled by car, armed with a letter to get us past guarded checkpoints along the way. Even today, full-time attendance at her office has yet to be reintroduced. So my wife still works from home for part of the week. This is where the PSC saga comes right up to date. Only now are we finally addressing the more mundane aspects of life we overlooked up to recently. Because my wife uses public transport a lot more than I do, not having a PSC has very immediate ramifications every time she steps on a bus or a train. So, a few weeks ago, she applied for the free travel pass at a local DSP office. She also had to apply for a PSC at the same time. Two applications, but one card. 
A few days later, my wife's new card arrived in the post, and since then, she travels to and from work without having to pay for her ticket. The outcome of this affair could suggest that my own resistance to the DSPs and treaties is little more than a storm in a teacup. I suspect I am in the PSI data set anyway. How else could the DSP know about my driving licence application unless a totally separate body, the RSA, had already given them my details? I am not complaining about the surveillance state. That's a given in today's world. PSE or no PSE, the Combine can keep tabs on us if they want to. But for me at any rate, they will have to do so without my cooperation. When I was starting Traitor to the Combine, I wrote this in my introduction. Quote, without our active support or our implied consent, the Combine would cease to exist overnight. This is good news, because if we were to withdraw from the Combine, it would collapse. End of quote. I want to see the end of the Combine, but until such time as it disappears completely, I will continue to ignore its beckoning finger. <laughs>